Um, yeah, if you could go to the, the next slide, please, Boris. Yeah, so uh, hello, everyone. My name is Martin Evans. I'm head of product at Unboxed. Uh, we're a service design and digital product development company who work largely but not exclusively in the public sector. Uh, some unboxed projects you might be aware of. Um, we built and maintained the UK Parliamentary Petition Service, which some of you will have no doubt used. A um, uh, story there is with many government projects, the code for this service is open source and it has now been reused by other parliaments, including uh, Jersey, Wales, and hopefully, fingers crossed, in Scotland. Um, we also helped to establish an online sexual health service called SH24 and we've created our own product Chargy, which is a, an electric vehicle charging solution that attaches to lampposts. I don't know if anybody's seen one of those in Southwark or elsewhere in the country. There's some in Buckinghamshire as well, actually, Ben. Um, tonight, I just, I just want to share with you the story so far of another project of ours, which we know as Logo. Um, next slide, please, Boris. Yeah, in, in 2016, Unbox registered a, a new community interest company, um, a, a social enterprise called the Local Digital Services Platform. Um, it was created to solve two problems. One of them was an internal agency problem, so probably not that not much interest to the tonight's audience. But it's it's basically how to give meaningful work to people um, when they're between projects. So if any of you have worked in agencies, you'll, you'll be very well aware of that project. But the second, more significant. Um, problem was around how to improve public services with technology or, or more specifically how to help local authorities make better use of technologies to deliver those services. Uh, having worked with various central government teams as user-centered design and agile were really starting to take hold, we saw signs of this approach being picked up by local government as has already been discussed. Um, but the challenges seemed even greater in local government. Um, the, the problem, as we saw, it was threefold. Uh, next slide, please, Boris. So the first problem is very little access to digital expertise. Uh, technologies tend to sit with, within IT uh, and was almost entirely focused on internal needs rather than citizen needs. The, the digital interface with the public was the, the council website, which was uh, some kind of battleground between various services, the comms teams and the IT department. Um, Agile was tended to be represented by a failed IT project and customer insight where there was any tended to come from the kind of overstretched uh, customer service team or the incoming complaints from citizens. But the digital community and local government was really growing and we wanted a vehicle to support that. Uh, next slide please Boris. Um, the, the second problem was financial. Uh, we're all familiar with the overwhelming narrative in local government. So budgets cut, constantly being cut, expectations to deliver more for less, and we all know the story. Um, but digital was constantly being framed as a way to save money rather than a way to uh, improve services. But digital transformation, uh, as some like to call it, is expensive, and I would argue never-ending. Um, and with limited money to invest and, and so many problems to solve, councils were continuing to buy in generic systems, CRM, CMSs, citizen portals, form builders, low-code platforms, which cover lots of ground but didn't really satisfy the, the customer need, as it were, the, the needs of citizens, and often caused more work behind the scenes um, for those running the service. Next slide, please. please. Uh, the third problem was uh, there were just too many services to uh, digitize. I won't pick up on the word digitize now, but you know what I mean. Uh, the number uh, varies on how you break it down, but every council delivers hundreds of services and couldn't possibly tackle them all at once. Uh, big services like housing, uh, revenues and benefits, social care, etc. They're, they're high volume, high profile and, and high risk. And the smaller services, um, if you wanted to tackle them, you had to upskill a team, an internal team, or buy in expertise, uh, upgrade infrastructure, and buy in new systems. It just didn't deliver the return on, in, on investment. So nobody quite knew where to start. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, so the answer we thought was low gov. Um, the model we proposed was that any council could decide what was the most important service to them. Uh, for them to invest in. They could run a process that aligned with the GDS service standard, Discovery Alpha, Beta, Live, um, and they could genuinely redesign their service uh, alongside 
the creation of digital tools, front end and back end software to support the delivery of that service. They could either run the project internally with their own team or if they had one or hire an agency like Unboxed, other agencies are available um, to do it for them or, or even better combine external expertise with their own team to both upskill and deliver at the same time. That, that's our preferred model. Um, the ownership of the digital product would sit in the, in the kick um, and other councils, if it seemed to meet their need, could you take it for a reasonable license fee, so cheaper than council are used to paying, uh, use it, enhance it, and, and perhaps focus their own efforts and invest in other services that they needed, that needed developing. The fees that came in from the license would be split to reimburse the investment of the originating council or any others that had invested and contributed uh, over time. And, uh, and reinvest in the existing services to improve them. Next slide, please, Boris. So after a really good start with, with Bucks County Council, actually, uh, who invested in two service areas, so school admissions and, and street maintenance, uh, things got a little bit sticky. Uh, whilst we had many interesting conversations, finding councils who were enlightened enough to uh, appreciate the concept uh, who had a budget available to invest in a service and, and were exactly that right point in, a, in the dreaded procurement process um, to design and build something rather than simply buying in another soon-to-be legacy system. Um, it was really hard. And if that wasn't enough of a problem, we encountered the, um, the, the um, uh, not invented here cognitive bias for some reason. Uh, councils really don't believe that something designed and built in one local authority could ever work in theirs. Uh, we, we clearly needed councils to collaborate from the start of the project so that they could all be part of the process, that their staff would feel ownership, the, the citizens would, their citizens would be consulted and we could launch the system, the service ideally with a number of councils at once, proving that it would work for others too. Um, Unfortunately, we, we've, we were unable to coordinate this kind of early innovative collaboration between councils from, from the outside. Um, and Logov has kind of been dormant since that initial flurry of activity. Uh, uh, Bucks find my child of school places live and working well for them, but the Maintain My Street project never really launched and nobody really picked up the baton. But now we feel the time is right for Logov, or at least something similar to Logov, a similar model. Uh, next and final slide, please, Boris. So, as already mentioned, the MHCLG Digital Fund has been really helpful in kickstarting the kind of collaboration we, we were aiming for. And people are really starting to think now about how projects can survive and thrive be beyond the initial funding from central government. Um, indeed, the, the MHCLG funded project, we're running with Southwark Council and partners uh, to support better planning systems is, is kind of racing towards launch as we speak. And we really want to an assemble a, an, an in-council product team. So a product team may be spread across a number of councils to manage the product going forward. Uh, we hope that the logo model or again something similar might provide a sustainable business model for that. Um, I'd just like to leave you some thoughts from Jack Ricketts, who is the product owner on the, um, the project, BOPS as we call it, on uh, how uh, some of the principles that this uh, business model might be built on. Um, that's it for me. Thank, thank you for listening. Uh, I hope it, it feels sometimes like a bit of a pitch, but I hope this has provoked some thoughts on, on how local authorities can share resources and, and, and work together. Thank you.